Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Recently, a new fangled fad has hit the streets, something known in the mini penny community as Slap Shop. Local Nottingham authorities claim that the viral video that's endangering our children has been brought on by one Rob, the Honest War Gamer. Hey, 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 Mr. Ninjon. I'm here from the Slap Shop Union to make sure you are paying your dues. As we know, Mr. Bally Joe of the Valley Joe Corporation is threatening to withhold the 001 paint. And so if you don't pay your dues, we can't collectively bargain for better paint. So don't be talking about slap chop on any of your videos like some of these other content creators without signing up. So where can I put your donation of $80,000? Blackmailed. I should have known. Let this be a lesson to all of you. Never trust a man with honest in his name. Hey everybody, how's it going? You know, lately I've been thinking an awful lot about speed painting, how it's an art in and of itself. You're trying to always find that perfect balance between efficiency and quality. And as the years go by in my miniature painting journey, I've realized that there probably is never going to be such thing as a perfect speed painting system. Instead, it's about the experimentation process, trying a little bit of something new, maybe folding in something into your process, maybe replacing one thing with another. So at the end of the day, your system is more fine tuned than it was at the beginning. So when I found out that my buddy Rob, the Honest War Gamer, introduced the Slap Chop system to the world of miniature painting, I figured I'd need to try it myself and find out what the hype was all about. And if you don't know who Rob is, he's a great content creator that focuses mostly on Age of Sigmar strategy, tournament coverage, and all sorts of other content. I'll link his channel down below so you can check him out. Do you mind if I have a bit of cake? Uh, this is my cake. <laughs> I'm gonna give myself 15 minutes with this method to finish one beaky marine, so let's get to slapping. What makes this method seem to really work is the few amount of steps, and each has a very specific purpose. By starting with the black prime and a gray zenithal from above, we set the volumes of the model, so later stages we don't need to worry about our midtones and shadows. I'm covering the black primer with the gray, but the darkest areas will still be fully black. And we get to keep all the crevices dark as well, meaning all the details of the model will be easy to make out by the time we're finished. So far, none of this stuff is groundbreaking. We've all seen black prime and zenithal before, and usually I like to use white from above for the zenithal. But from what I understand, by using a light gray, we're actually setting the tone for all of our midsections while giving us a little bit higher of a ceiling for coming back in with white in the next step. So far, this does seem efficient, especially if you're trying to paint an entire army fast. The third step is the special sauce in Slap Chop. You simply bust out your sexiest dry brushes and go to town over the entire model in white. We're gonna push all of the edges and the brightest points near the head and shoulders of the model so we can really make those pop later on. Again, I applaud the efficiency here. Edge highlighting is both the most eye-catching and the most time-intensive parts of typical miniature painting, but by cracking them out right now and going over them later with paint, we're still showing that vibrancy over all the edges while saving ourselves a buttload of time. Since I was feeling way ahead of schedule on this model, I did take a small brush out and I popped a few of the key details in that white to make sure that they really were fully opaque for the next step. Now the first three steps of this process were all to set the stage for our fourth and final step and that is where Slap Chop gets its name because we are going to slap on contrast paint over this entire model. The shadows, midtones, and highlights are all done with this step, as contrast is wont to do. However, we've laid the foundation to amplify that effect even more. And there really isn't a whole lot to say here, just paint a thing, move on to the next thing, paint that thing. The trickiest part of this whole slap chop process is making sure you don't get your color on other surfaces, because if that green hits something that isn't supposed to be green, you're gonna have to live with it or you're gonna to have to go back through and paint that white over the top again and then repaint your color. 
Now, because Slap Shop uses very little to no airbrush work, it does mean that you are spending a fair bit of time picking out every single detail by hand. If I was painting a model that had a lot of different colors and details, it would certainly be efficient and great. But something that's largely one color, like this marine here, it may be faster just to airbrush the thing this green to start with. But I do have to admit that vibrant, bright colors really do pop in this style because we're not muddying them down by putting on washes to add shadows or layers. It's just pure Games Workshop, stereotypical box art style, bright, vibrant color schemes. And if you like that style, this Slap Shop technique is pretty darn good at it. So we've officially accomplished our goal of painting this Heresy Marine in 15 minutes or less. But you didn't think we were just going to stop there, did you? Now that I've popped my Slap Shop cherry, it's time for me to take what I've learned here, integrate some things that I really like to do in my own version of speed painting, and see if we can come up with a new and improved Slap Shop 2.0. That's right, Rob. I'm the captain now. I got myself one of them new Leagues of Voltron Dwarves, and instead of priming him black, I'm going to come in with a dark cherry-ish color. I'm priming with this warm color because his armor is going to be orange, and a warm undertone should really kick it up a notch. Next, instead of hitting the model from above with a neutral gray tone, I'm going with a light warm tone in this yellowish beige. Again, this is just to reinforce the warmth of our shadow color below. Each transparent contrast layer we apply later over these will still show a bit of that warmth underneath. And then we finish up our undercoats with that same white dry brush as seen on TV with the OG Slap Chop. I'm trying a heavy body acrylic white here for the dry brush just because I kind of was curious and it is never a bad time to experiment. In the end, this fancy artist's heavy body white really made no difference at all. So you go about your business with whatever white you already have. But now we know and knowing is half the battle. Other half's lasers. We are ready to start adding color to our Wii Space Adventurer here. And up to this point, I'm on track to finish the model in the same amount of time as our last. But here's where we're going to have some amount of variation in our time to completion. And it really doesn't come from any of my changes in the approach I'm taking to painting the model. But instead, just how much detail and gobbledygook crap and different colors we have to use on this model. The good news is I've found that models that have different variations in textures, a bunch of different kinds of details, and all sorts of different cracks and crevices really benefit from using contrast paint with a brush. The flip side of that coin is if you're painting a big model with a lot of flat or large round surfaces, painting with contrast can be an utter pain. All I'm saying is there's a reason why you don't see people telling you to paint your rhinos and land raiders with contrast paint and a paintbrush. <laughs> As I'm throwing contrast all over the surfaces, I'm feeling the slight but noticeable difference in this paint job versus the Heresy Marine. Having that color interest in the darker areas and keeping a warmth in the zenithal highlight leads to a less drab look in the shadows and a more vibrant, clean look in all of the brighter contrast paints that we're using. Just last week you By the time I'm finished painting the base on this model, we're at just over 16 minutes to completion. And this is fairly respectable, but our Slap Chop 2.0 paint job isn't done just yet. Oh no, I've got one more trick up my sleeve, and it'll leave Rob in the dust. All you gotta do is grab yourself a handful of light pastel paints, and we're gonna get to work. It's Easter basket time. We're dying eggs. We are going to do some edge highlighting. Now I know what you're thinking, this is a speed paint job. Ain't nobody got time for edge highlighting, but hear me out. I'm gonna show you why 10 minutes of edge highlighting makes a world of difference if you do it the proper speed painting way. 
We are just going to do one pass of edge highlights, starting with the most important parts of the model first. For this guy, it's his face and his orange armor. We're using bright off-white tones, so it makes an immediate impact without deviating too far from the base color's tone. We're starting with the most important bits because when you feel you're ready to be done edge highlighting this model, just say you're done. If you've done the face and the armor, he's gonna look awesome. If I was doing 50 of these little buggers, I'd only highlight the face and armor. These are the two areas that make the biggest impact and they can be done in under three minutes per model with a little practice. I understand the mantra around Slap Chop is it's about getting all your army painted quick. So you can get to that tournament and have your models painted by the weekend. Or you can go to your D&D &D game this weekend and you can have all the monsters ready for your party to fight. But there's two major reasons why I think you should not ignore this step. First off, the model is actually fully painted before this step. So you can go play a game with them tomorrow. You don't need to do this step right away. Even though it really won't take much time, you can do it at any point. Next, I know you want to get your stuff done fast, but if you do this step, the amount of brush control you will learn and how much you will improve as a miniature painter will be astounding by doing this over an entire army. So not only can you get all your stuff done fast, but you can actually improve your skills as you go. I'd be remiss not to share some kind of a tip in any of my videos that wouldn't take you a little closer up the rungs of the ladder of becoming a better miniature painter. And as you do this edge highlighting, you're going to get faster and faster at it while your quality improves. You will know what angle to hold the model at without even thinking about it. And you won't have to stress about having half painted models and rushing through this step because they're already going to be table ready before you knock out the highlighting. So Slap Chop 2.0 isn't a complete redesign. It's still close enough to the original that I do have to pay my union dues in order to process this video. But I think it's enough of an improvement that I'm happy to share it with y'all. Oh, and if you want, there's even more quick steps you can tack on to the end of this approach. I hadn't used my full 10 minutes in my edge highlighting, so I grabbed a yellow shade and hit all of the orange armor really fast to pump up that vibrancy even more. So here we are, a 15 minute slap chop 1.0 Heresy Marine versus a 26 minute slap chop 2.0 Leagues of Voltron. I'm not saying my method is better. Maybe time is your only concern and you need to just get stuff done and have it look pretty darn good in the process. The point of my experiment today was just that, to experiment. We don't need to create imaginary rules for ourselves in miniature painting. Be fearless, try out new techniques, evolve your approach over time, and the quality of your painted armies will grow with you. Slap Chop 2.0. It's not the slap you want, but it is the slap you need. Thanks for getting slap happy with me today. And a big thank you to Rob the Honest Wargamer for allowing me to pay my union dues in monthly installments. Hey, why don't you go give Rob some love? I've got his links down below in the video description. But before you go give him some love, why don't you give me some love first? Because I just was reminded that 54% of you are still not subscribed to this channel. And in order for us to keep this base slapping, we need you all in the covenant. So make sure you hit that subscribe button today. And if you really want to feel my love, check out the link to my Patreon down in the video description below. For only a couple bucks a month, you get access to some cool rewards and you get to join me in the dojo. Seriously, I cannot thank my patrons enough. It's because of you that I get to do this and make these weird videos full time. I'm going to see you all back here again real soon. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay or slap the gray. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace and I just recently started my own website using Squarespace and it was incredibly easy to set up. Not only is having your own website great for showcasing your hobby or your interests, you can also create members only content and you can manage those members. You can send them emails, letting them know about updates. They can know whenever you post a new tutorial or blog, everything is easy to use on one platform. So head on over to squarespace.com for your free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash ninjan for 10% off your purchase of a website or domain. A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video.